my dad took us when I was four years old. He took us into a place uh, Dr. Harold Seitler had heard about and got a burden for, and my dad had just finished Bible college, and my dad struggled so, hardly could read when he went to Bible college, and, and uh, he struggled through school. He had a heart's desire for missions, and his friends were going to various places around the world. But my dad said, Lord, how could I learn another language when I can't pass English? And so he struggled with the will of God for his life, and his first Sunday back at home in Greenville, South Carolina, he went back under the pastor, Dr. Harold Seitler, just saying, whatever you want me to do, that morning, Dr. Seitler told about people up in the eastern Kentucky and the Appalachian Mountains, many of whom, uh, most of whom, could not even read and write. And he talked about the burden and need of somebody to go. And my dad said, the Lord said, there's a place for you. And he took us in when I was four years old, up in the head of a holler, up in the, the, just a wagon road, in and out of the creek. In fact, I have a journal where my dad organized the men and built the first bridges everywhere a bridge was needed. Uh, my dad got the men to help him, and they built four bridges going up that uh, holler. And only dad and Green's mule worked on all four bridges. But we lived next to the last house, and so uh, dad just started in there. Five people murdered in there the year before and just killing each other, feuding burning each other's houses, and uh, the Lord called my dad there, and the sheriff warned him. He said, now, preacher, i got kinfolk in there, and I won't go. He said, you're crazy to take your family. And he did. I was four years old, moved us into a house. My mom was just a city girl, uh, and bless her heart, she really didn't want to go, but uh, the story of Charles Weigel, and my dad was at Tennessee Temple when Charles Weigel lived there, who wrote, No One Ever Cared For Me Like Jesus, spoke to my mother's heart, and she yielded and said, I'll go with you, because she had originally told him, she said, Now you can go, now just write to us and let us know how you're doing. <laughs> she said, I'm a city girl, I don't, I'm no mountain woman. But, you know, my mother went and moved, uh, bless her heart, and we moved into a house, no running water unless you wanted to run and get it, no electricity, and uh, we, uh, but my dad built a great work there, just leading people to Christ, not another murder in that community, and uh, built a church up there, and uh, I learned the ministry there, and uh, I praise the Lord for it. The only activity, really, when I was growing up that people would do, <clears throat> there was the sale barn. We had a sale barn out a couple of miles out on the main highway, and um, half of the county and even people from counties around would go there and they had stock sales. But people would go there and in wagons, mules pull the wagons and they would load down those wagons with all kinds of things to trade. And that was their way of life. They prided themselves in making good trades. They lived that way. I got to thinking about that and, and, and the trade that I made one day with the Lord Jesus. And can I say to you, the only one you can really trust to make a deal with your life is the Lord Jesus. Amen. For there was a day I traded everything bad about me. He gave me everything good about him. Amen. Oh, what a trade I made that day when I trusted Jesus as my Savior. When I was a boy, men bragged of trade, a dog for a hog, one might would say, a sow for a cow, or a kittle for a fiddle, a tool for a mule, or a little for some vittles. Oh, I beat them all with the trade I made, my rags for his riches, my faith for his grace. My loss was his cross, and his pain was my gain. My doom was his tomb, and all my shame for his dear name. T'was Christ that dealt with me that day. Though nothing I had with him to trade, why fool would be to refuse what he gave? 
for all my sins on him were laid. Dear friend, the only one that you can trust to trade your life with is the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to speak tonight on don't make a deal with the devil. Don't take the devil's deal. <clears throat> the Lord Jesus, speaking primarily to the disciples in Mark chapter 8, Mark chapter 8, the Lord is challenging his disciples to trust him with their life, to yield completely their life to the Lord, to trust Him. He warned them against trading their life with the devil, the God of this old world, and I'm going to tell you, the devil will offer a devil of a deal. You've heard the Arabic tales of the genie in the bottle or the lantern and how you find the, you find the bottle, you find the lantern, rub it, and out pops the genie. And he'll give you maybe three wishes. You, you're, you've, read the, you've read the stories, perhaps uh, watched some of the uh, animated tales of the Arabic tales. Never can you make a deal with the devil and win. It may be much like the blonde and the brunette and the redhead that was stranded on a, a deserted island. They had been there for years. And one day, walking along the beach, there was a bottle. They uncorked the bottle, and sure enough, a jenny popped out. <clears throat> and so, the jenny said to them, since there is three of you, I can only grant each of you one wish. Well, the brunette said, we've been stuck here for years. I miss my family, and I miss my husband. I, I, I miss my life. I want to go home, and poof. The brunette gets her wish, and she has returned to her family then the redhead said, I've been stuck here for years too. I miss my family. I, I miss my husband. I miss my life. I too want to go home. Her wish was granted. She was returned to her family. The blonde started crying uncontrollably. The Jenny asked, my dear, what's the matter? The blonde whimpers, I wish my friends were here. <laughs> you can never, ever make a deal with the devil. By the way, the Arabic word for devil or demon is Jenny. That's the Arabic word. And as are the Arabic tales, so is it true for you, dear Christian friend, certainly for you that might be here that's lost tonight, you will never come ahead, get ahead in making a deal with the devil. He's a shrewd dealer. Notice here in this passage of Scripture, in verse 27, Jesus went out and his disciples into the towns of Caesarea Philippi. And by the way, he asked his disciples, saying unto them, Whom do men say that I am? And they answered, John the Baptist, but some say Elias, and others one of the 
prophets. And he saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Peter answereth and saith unto him, Thou art the Christ. And he charged them that they should tell no man of him. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things. By the way, the reason Jesus told them not to declare him at this time, they did not understand the gospel. He's about to explain to them what he wants them to declare to the whole world. He is about to explain to you and I what we should be declaring to the whole world. And Jesus began teaching the disciples and he said to Peter and the rest, the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. And he spake that saying openly and Peter took him and began to rebuke him. But when he had turned about and looked on his disciples, he rebuked Peter saying, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men. And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Dear friend, I don't want the Lord to be ashamed of me when he comes again. I want that to be such a welcoming sight. Don't make a deal with the devil. I want you to, first of all, Notice Satan's deal for your life. Young people, Satan will offer a devil of a deal to you. It's going to sound like, oh my, what an opportunity. Chance of a lifetime. He is going to offer the world to you. Many of you, young people, the decisions you make in the next four or five years it's going to determine the course of your life, whether you'll be happy, sad, what kind of family that you have 35 years from now, the decisions you make in the next four or five years. And there are two that are bidding, that, that's making a bid for your life. First of all, consider Satan's deal for your life. Now, there are three in this passage of Scripture that we see that Satan is offering a deal for their life. And the first one, let's consider, consider Satan's deal to the Savior. Now, notice on down, Jesus said, now, if you save yourself, if, if you save your life, he said, you're going to lose it. Satan's offer to the Lord Jesus is the same. Save yourself. Those words are given a few chapters later in chapter 15, our Savior hanging upon the cross. Earlier here in this passage, Peter said, no, you must save yourself. You must not go to the cross. He goes to the cross and there Satan makes another offer. He's hanging upon the cross. Mark 15 and verse number 29, And they that passed by railed on him, wagging their heads and saying, Ah, 
Thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself and come down from the cross. Likewise also the chief priests mocking said among themselves with the scribes, He saved others, himself he cannot save. Let Christ the King of Israel descend now from the cross that we may see and believe that and they that were crucified with him reviled him. Do you understand that Satan has made that same offer to the Savior? Save yourself! But dear friend, had Jesus taken Satan's offer to save himself, you and I, definitely we'd be lost. We would be on our hell, uh, way to hell. We would be doomed for eternity. There would be no hope for any of us. But Jesus did not take Satan's offer to save himself. He said, no deal. No deal. And by the way, we're going to see in a moment, he makes the same offer to the, to the saint. And if we take Satan's offer, do you realize again, people will be lost. He puts the eternal destiny of this lost and dying world like himself. He said, take up your cross. Follow me for the gospel's sake. But if we take Satan's deal, no less than the Lord Jesus coming down from the cross, we are saying, no, no. I will save myself and let the lost die and go to hell. I am so glad Jesus, being my example, did not save himself. Amen. Satan makes the same offer to the sinner. Save yourself, he says to the sinner. There might be someone here like that. The song I sang a while ago, it's real. I sing that for my wife, her testimony. She struggled for years trying to get it settled concerning her salvation. She grew up in a Calvinistic church who they would not even take the word of God when someone came forward. But if you were one of the elect, you were one of the elect and you were in and and if you made that move, uh, then you must be one of the elect and they would turn you around and present you to the church. Yeah. My wife grew up in that situation, but she had so desired to be saved when she was 12 and the best she knew how. She called on the Lord to save her, but because no one really spoke to her or challenged her, she struggled with that for years. She would say to me, and this, I've been pastoring for some time. Uh, she would say, now I said this, now I did this, uh, now I did this. Now, now am I saved? All I could do is take her to the Word of God and show her from God's Word Jesus said he did. And the only way in the world that you can know that you're saved is to take Jesus at his Word. <laughs> He will, Satan will say, why don't you save yourself with religion? Notice there in verse 27 and 28, Jesus asked the question, whom do men say that I am? Well, one, some say Elias, and some say John the Baptist, and some say one of the prophets. You know, just... You're one of many ways, and I'm going to tell you, Satan will offer his religions and various religions and say, it's one's as good as another. Save yourself, but dear friend, you, if you save yourself, Jesus said you certainly will be lost. The deal seems very reasonable to man. Hebrews 9.22 says, and almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. Without the blood-stained cross, you and I would have no hope. And dear friend, if you're here and you say, I, I, I've, been a, I, well, I've been a Methodist, I, I've been a Baptist, I, 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 I've been a Presbyterian, I've been this or that, and 
Dear friend, without Jesus, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Satan's deal to the sinner, save thyself. And dear friend, tonight, if you're here and you've never trusted Jesus, Jesus alone for your salvation, what will you say to Satan's deal? Will you tonight say no deal? No deal to the to the devil but thirdly dear saint you that are saved to the saved to the soul winner he will say to you why don't you save yourself Peter said Lord Jesus it certainly must not be you must not die Jesus said to him, Thou savorest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of man. He said, If you, if you don't uh, lose yourself for my sake and the gospels, to the soul winner, he'll say to us all, Why don't you just save yourself? Why don't you just live for yourself? Why don't, why don't you think of you? You don't need to give of yourself and give of your life for the gospel's sake and it sounds reasonable don't concern yourself with the salvation of the lost but notice if you would the Savior's desire for your life and mine tonight consider it would you he, he says this is what Satan's offer for you is. Now consider my, my offer for your life. First of all, the Savior's desire for your life and mine is to himself. Notice verse 34, And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples, the first thing the Lord Jesus wants of your life and mine. He wants us to be with him. Before you'll ever become a soul winner, you're going to have to be with Jesus. You're going to have to hear his heart beat. You're going to have to understand the desire for which he came and gave himself. And the very love of Christ must constrain you if you'll ever be what you ought to be for him, his desire for you is to be with him. Secondly, to follow him. He says there, he said, whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Jesus said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. If you're not fishing, you're not following you're following Jesus. He'll make you fishers of men. And the desire for the Lord Jesus is for you to spend time with him, and we ought to every day of our life, but then to follow him out in this old lost and dying world and to win the lost. You see the concern of the Savior as he warns Peter of his concern to to be concerned about the things of this life. He said, but if you follow me, give your life for my sake and the gospels. The gospels. The Savior's desire for your life. Now let's consider the saint's decision. You got a decision tonight. What is the decision that Jesus points out and I, I've been to many of those. I, I, I'm fascinated when I would go to those set, the old sail barn and those people would be trading. I tried my, I tried that. I, I, I'm not good at it. My dad is. Now, my dad's an old horse trader. I, he, he likes that. And I've seen dad, I've seen dad uh, uh, get them down at Walmart. I mean, he said, now this has got a place on it here. And I've seen him. I've seen him walk out of Walmart with a better deal. I, but you've got a decision. 
to make. Now, what is, what is the decision tonight that you need to make if, if, and that you're, if you're going to get a good deal tonight? The decision is, first of all, what you are going to savor. He says to Peter, Thou savorest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men. What does that word savor mean? You've got to decide tonight what you will savor, the things of God, the things that be of men. That word savor means to interest oneself in. What are you most interested in for today? What interests you? Are you more interested in the things of men or the things that be of God? Today is Sunday. You say, oh, I, I definitely, I think, I, think, um, I think God won out today, but what about tomorrow on Monday when you go to work? What about when you get home from work and the decisions that you'll make, you'll make as... Uh, perhaps how you'll entertain yourself or the places that you may go. And young people, what about you? What's the desire for your life? What are you most interested in, the things that be of God or the things that be of men? And notice, to savor the things of man or the things of God, which is what? The gospel. That is what God is most concerned about is the gospel. If I am interested in what God is interested in, I am going to savor the gospel more than anything else. What am I going to savor? And then... The the decision to save or lose. To save or lose. That word save means to deliver, to, to protect, to, to preserve one's life. I'm going to keep my life for me. I'm going to live my life. I, I'm going to preserve it for myself. And, and Jesus is saying to Peter, to the disciples, to the saints, he said, you've got a decision to make. Are you going to save your life? Are you going to live your life for yourself? He said, if you do, you're going to lose it. Are you going to give it, lose it? That word lose literally means to yield, to surrender. He said, will you surrender your life? Now, that word, or your soul, he said, if you say, he said, there, he said, what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Now, if you, if you like to mark in your Bible, as I do, I circled the word soul. And up there where the Lord Jesus saved his life, I circled the word life, and I drew a line between life and soul because it is identically the same word. So what he is talking about, what, is his, what he's speaking about is the decision of what I'm going to do with the life that God's given me, my lifetime, my decades. Hey, teenagers, all you teenagers singing up here in the choir, it's the same deal the devil is trying to get you to decide what you'll do with your teen years. Are you going to save it or lose it? Are, are you going to live your teen, teen years for yourself and say, I, I'm going to keep all my teen years for me, or will you yield your teen years to the Lord Jesus Christ and say, Lord, whatever your will is for my life, that is, that's what I'm going to give. To save or to lose. I'm in my 60s now. I'm telling you, I, I, you know, I'm at that time in my life when I, that time of life when they said, you know, it's time now that you've got to plan to do nothing the rest of your life. But I'm beginning to realize I only get to be old one time. I will not get to go back and be old again. 
When I stand before the Lord I, I, and I, I've just done nothing during my retirement years, I've, I've just let it go, I've, I've lived it all for me. I want get be able to get it back again in every decade of my life. I've had to make that choice. I've had to make that decision, and so do you tonight, to save or to lose, to yield, to surrender your life. Now, let's consider the saint's discernment. I got... I really, I, 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 this got locked in my brain early in life, even watching those trades at the sale barn. I had to determine if that tool was worth that tool or if that cow was worth that mule. I had to value the, consider what is this value compared to this value. Now, the two things that are being weighed, young people, listen to me, is your life and the world. Jesus said the whole world. Satan will offer to you the whole world in exchange for your life. All right, then we've got to determine what is the value of your life? What's it worth compared to the whole world? Well, let's consider what is the worth of your life? What is the value of your life? It is illustrated by the Father's care of Little birds. Jesus said in Matthew 10, verse 29, are not two sparrows sold for a farthing, and one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Amen. Fear you not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Here's the picture the Lord Jesus Christ gives. A little sparrow bird in the winter time, cold winter time like we have sometimes. I don't know how the bird survived a couple of winters ago, 25 degrees below zero, and that's nothing compared up in, uh, in the northwest and so on. But we had it 25 degrees below zero. In fact, the coldest day on record in the state of Kentucky is January 23rd, 1963. It was on Wednesday. My dad couldn't have church, so he had it in our home, trying to keep his family warm hung up quilts around an old coal stove, had out his Bible, and that night I was born again. Amen. That Wednesday night, that was he had church on that Wednesday night because I got saved, coldest day on record. But can you imagine on those cold days like that, little old sparrow birds just shivering there on a limb? And it quivers takes its last breath and it folds its wings and it falls. And we think, well, a little bird can't fall without the father knowing about it, but that's not what he says. He said it can't fall without your father. It's like the father just cups his hand. That little old bird falls into his hand. And I'm going to tell you something. You're far more valuable than that little old sparrow bird to the Lord. Your life is of far more value than the little birds, the many sparrows. It's demonstrated by the cost of the purchased price. How much? How much will you? And I used to watch those auctions and they would bring that livestock down in the bull ring and they'd begin to bid and those old bib cover all farmers. Ah, they'd begin to... Yo, know, I'll go forty dollars. I'll go four to five, fifty dollars, and finally sold. How much does it cost? How much does your life, the cost of the purchase price? 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The value, the worth of your, your precious life is worth to God the precious life of his only begotten Son, Jesus. I can't imagine giving one of my precious children for some criminal or anyone exchanging their life but God did that because my life your life has a, has the value that's what your your life that you're bargaining with on the one hand now let's consider the the value of the world Jesus said here what would it profit a man if he should gain the whole world? What's the worth of the world? The whole world. Now, John, who is listening to this sermon, he's like a lot of us preachers. You hear a good sermon, you might preach it again sometime. And John, he preaches this sermon the Lord Jesus Christ preached here in 1 John chapter 2. Turn to 1 John chapter 2. Let's find out what the whole world is. And as we often do in our sermons, we may expound a little upon the sermon. And in 1 John chapter number 2, we find the worth of the whole world. Verse 15. Verse 14 is said that we have overcome the wicked one. That's the old devil. In other words... We didn't take his deal. Amen. But here John explains what the whole world is. Verse 15, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him, for all that is in the world. We're about to find out what the whole world is. The lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. That's the message Jesus had just preached. He said, what would it profit if you gain the whole world and lose your own soul for what shall you give in exchange for the world? He is saying, Jesus is saying, if you lived your whole life and you got it, you got the whole world, with your last breath, you achieved the whole world and died. Then what you got? Nothing. What is the whole world? First of all, and again, remember the Jenny in the bottle? Jenny says you get three wishes. I'll give you three wishes. Young people, the devil is saying, I'll give you, i tell you what, give me your life, make a deal with me, I'll give you three wishes. But you know what is really odd? Very few people get the whole world. Most people will trade their life for even one, one of the offers that Satan will make. Wish number one of the whole world, the lust of the flesh. What is the lust of the flesh? The lust of the flesh is the ability to do anything you want to do. I'm telling you, that's a big offer that the devil has. Oh, you, you don't have to do what anybody says. Do what you want to do. I mean, just go through your life doing whatever you want to do, and if you trade your life, go through your life doing your will and your will alone, you have traded your life for one-third of the world my many people have taken that deal of the devil but if you're going to make a deal with the devil surely you can bargain a little better than that surely you ought to be able to dicker just a little bit but I'm going to tell you the Lord has a far better offer than wish number one the lust of the flesh to do whatever you want to do Colossians 3, 23 and 24, And whatsoever ye do, 
do it heartily unto the Lord and not unto men knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance for ye serve the Lord Christ just do what the Lord wants you to do and I'm telling you you get the whole thing you get it all all that is his is yours the inheritance wish number two you say, oh, I'm not going to fall so easily for Satan's deal. Then Satan will not give up. He will come back with the lust of the eyes. Now, what is the lust of the eye? My, how tempting this one is. It is the ability to have anything you see. Whatever you see, the devil say, you want it? You can have it. Now, that's the lust of the eyes. I was uh, about a year or so ago. I don't know. Time, time is not the same for me anymore. It's just, I, I don't know if it was a year ago, two years ago. It might have been five years ago. It just seemed like yesterday. But I was sitting in a restaurant. I don't understand commercials. They, they're just way over my head. I have to have an interpreter these days for the modern day commercials. I, we're sitting in the restaurant on the screen. There is this girl sitting at a desk. She is looking into her phone. As she looks into her phone, her phone starts opening up and everything starts opening to her. She looks out the door. The door opens. She goes out of the classroom, down the hallway. All the lockers just open up. She passes by the science lab. The science lab just opens up. She goes out the school door, and the whole world just opens up to her. And I said to my son-in-law, I said, what is that? He said, oh, that's the X phone commercial. But I'm going to tell you that's exactly what the devil will do. He'll say, just whatever you see, you can have it. Just give me your life. Live for me today. Live for the world today. I'll give, you, I'll give you anything in this world. It's the same offer. By the way, all of these were the same offers he made to Jesus. There on the Mount of Temptation, all of these were he, he offered to the Lord. Jesus. I'll give you everything you see, Lord. All of these. Uh, oh, he didn't say Lord. No indication Jesus, Satan has ever called him Lord, but he will one day, amen. But he said, I'll give you it all. Bow down and worship me. Young people, don't take the devil's deal. The Lord Jesus offers something far better than whatever you see. Jesus said in 1 Corinthians, uh, the word says in 1 Corinthians 2, 9, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, nor ear... Uh, uh, Neither hath it entered the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. I'm telling you, it's more than the eye can see what the Lord has in store for us. Don't take the devil's deal with your life. Amen. Third wish. Now, if you make the deal with the devil, some people may get two, very few get three. But if you're going to deal with the devil, at least get all of it. The third is the pride of life. What is the pride of life? The pride of life is the ability to be what you want to be, whatever you want to be. The devil will say, you want to be this, that, or the other? Then live for me. Let me have your life. You can be all that you want to be. But you know what Jesus wants? You to be like him his offer is far better behold what manner of love the father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not beloved now are we the sons of God and it doth not yet appear what we shall be but we know that when he shall appear we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is and every man that hath this hope purifieth himself even as he is pure oh to be like Jesus far better than to be what I want to be that's the sa Savior's offer 
contrasted with Satan's offer? If you make Satan's, take Satan's offer, Jesus said, he said, if you trade your life, give your life for the world, what shall it profit you? You have nothing left. Why? John explains it a little further. The world passeth away, and the lust thereof, and it's all gone. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Oh, what a deal it is to deal with the Savior. Young people, give your life to the Lord Jesus. Every decade of your life, you that are in your 20s and you're looking for to be ambitious in the world is saying now's the time. You're young. You've got your energy. Uh, You've got opportunities. The world is waiting. Give your life to Jesus. Yes. You that are in your 30s, your 40s, your 50s, your 60s, you that are in your 70s, you don't have much left. The devil will say, oh, think of you, save your life. Save, save, save the time you've got left. But the Lord Jesus said, just give it to me. Let me have it, and I hath not seen or ear heard. He that doeth the will of the Father abideth forever. Oh, what a deal it is to deal with the Savior, to give your life. Just trust him with it. Trust him with it all. He said, for my sake and the gospels. Nothing greater that you could do with your life. Heavenly Father, speak to our hearts and help